Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. And our top story today, where and how you sit matters when getting your blood pressure taken. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Dr. Bruce Alpert. Dr. Alpert, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. It's my honor. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's certainly our honor. Today, we're going to be talking about blood pressure testing. And, and uh, there was a recent study, I think, by Dr. Wexler and his team about uh, how you sit for a blood pressure test determines what the result could be. Could you give us a little bit more detail? <laughs> well, for, for decades, the American Heart Association has recommended a certain positioning for the most accurate measurement of blood pressure. And that includes several factors like not talking, sitting for a bunch of minutes, but the things that were the most important for our study was that three uh, position factors, feet flat on the floor, sitting in a chair with the back supported, and the arm with the blood pressure cuff supported at the level of the heart. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in many healthcare offices and sites, the patient is asked to sit on the exam table in order to have the blood pressure done. And on the exam table, your feet are not flat on the floor, your back is not supported, and your arm is dangling at your side and not supported at the level of the heart. It's been known for decades that each of those factors has a small <clears throat> contribution to artifactually high blood pressure readings. So what we wanted to do was to see the cumulative effect because if it raised blood pressure sufficiently, then people would be misclassified as having high blood pressure when they did not. Yeah, and, and that's, this is really good information. And also Dr. Alpert, some people take their blood pressure at home. Maybe they've already been pre-diagnosed with hypertension, they have some other ailment. Right, sir. So they buy one of those over-the-counter. I don't. Know, we'll get to accuracy in a few minutes of those devices. But um, you really need to think about how you're uh, you're doing the test, whether you're using going to the doctor or whether you're using your own device. Yes, I, I think one of the purposes of the article <clears throat> was to inform the patients themselves, in addition to the healthcare workers, so that when you go to your doctor or when you're doing it at home, <clears throat> don't let them put you on the exam table. And when you're at home, do those instructions, <clears throat> sitting in a chair, your arm, you know, supported, elevated, and and um, do wait several minutes uh, before you do the blood pressure reading. And Dr. Alpert, uh, I drink coffee from time to time. Uh, in terms of the prep, is it better to get, you know, people might go to the doctor at all times of the day. Is there a better time of day to do the blood, to the blood, do the blood pressure test? And should you not drink caffeinated drinks like a, a black cup of coffee? Does that have a ma major impact? No, it's not part of the study, but does it have a major impact to the readings of the blood pressure monitor? Well, we, we all have circadian patterns of our blood pressure. Uh, there is a morning rise. And so, you know, one, it really is impossible to get complete control over when you'd like to have your blood pressure done because your doctor's office determines when you're going to be there. Um, <clears throat> but if you're doing it at home, it's best to do when you, when you wake up before you've had coffee because caffeine is as a stimulant will increase your blood pressure. And the amount is going to vary patient to patient. Some people, of course, are a little more you know, susceptible to increases in blood pressure and other people, not so much. You know, It's like any other medicine. 
everybody's metabolism and genetics are different. Yeah. Uh, well, Dr. Alpert, I want to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about taking an accurate reading of your blood pressure. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Dr. Bruce Alpert. Dr. Alpert, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Uh, my, my pleasure. Uh, we have a lot more to, to tell the people. And I was just feeling my pulse and it's gone down significantly. I think my, my blood pressure, I was a little nervous actually. Uh, Dr. Alpert, let's talk a little bit about the study. Um, first, how did it, how was it performed and what was the actual variance? So if you, if you sat on an exam table versus sitting feet flat on the floor in the position that you, that this study recommends, what's the variance? Well, let me get to your first question first. The study was set up in 150 people. There are three groups. The first group had their pressure taken sitting in the chair in the proper position, uh, three readings uh, after a rest period, not talking. And then they walked across the same exam room, sat up on the exam table, a couple minutes resting, and then three more readings. The second group started on the table and then went to the chair. And then the third group as a control sat in the chair, had their readings, actually walked to and from the table, sat down again and had their readings done in the chair. <clears throat> so that we had, and everything was done with a single automated device. So we didn't have human error. We, we were able to compare a to B and then B to A to make sure there wasn't an effect of you know what you did first. <clears throat> the difference from chair to table was on the table, the systolic blood pressure, the upper number was seven higher and the lower number diastolic was four and a half millimeters higher. Now the American Heart Association uh, uh, divisions are going going fact going in intervals of ten, so up to one twenty is quote normal, up to one thirty is elevated, one thirty to one forty is hypertension the first stage, and over one forty is hypertension the second stage. <clears throat> so, if your blood pressure really is one twenty five, for instance, <clears throat> and they sit you up on the table, then it puts you into the hypertension category. So it's a matter of, wait a minute, <clears throat> you know, if you're the doctor, you say, oh, you have hypertension, 
we've got to start you on medicines. Well, these may be medicines you don't need and medicines that can give you side effects and really affect, you know, your, your life, your lifestyle. And Dr. Alpert, does it, I'm not a betting man, but does it matter or, but I love baseball and should you do best out of three? So when you get the test and you're sitting there, sometimes what I do when I have a home monitor, I just do it three times and I take the best, the best of, or I average them together. Is that a, is that a reasonable approach or do things not really change from time to time if there's not a big gap? um, Every, every time you do the first reading in an overwhelming proportion of people, it's always the highest value. And now pretty much as a standard of care, you do three readings, you discard the first and you average the second and third. And you try to try to separate the readings by about one minute. Uh, it's kind of hard if you're just sitting there to you know, count to 60, but you know, if you wait the 45 seconds, that, that's probably enough as well. And Dr. Alpert, there are a lot of home care devices that I think mirror or mimic the physician, the practical experience. How, how, but in general, and I'm not asking you to review, this is not consumer reports, we're not asking you to review the actual devices, but how accurate are those devices relative to what you might experience in the, in the office, in the doctor's sure. office? Yeah, it, it, a lot of the monitors that are on the shelf have gone through rigorous validation testing, exactly the same as the fancy ones in the doctor's office. Unfortunately, there are some on the market that have snuck by for one reason or another. And my advice to people would be when you go to the to the store, uh, you know, look on the shelf, don't buy the $29.95, buy something that's a bit more expensive and traditionally from a well-known brand. Um, ultimately, <clears throat> it would be the best if you would buy a device, you'd take it to your doctor's office, you'd sit with the nurse or you know somebody, and you take your, your blood pressure with your device and then compare that to whatever the doctor is using as the gold standard to decide, are you sick or you're not sick? Unfortunately, a lot of doctor's offices can't take the time to do that, but <clears throat> if it were me, I'd sure take the time to do that. Yeah, and lastly, Dr. Alpert, uh, the, the wearable devices have become exceptionally pop- popular. Apple, Garmin, Fitbit, I mean, you name the brand. Um, they have been incorporating healthcare type of devices uh, where they can actually check your bro- blood pressure. Um, are those, generally a- accurate? I mean, I know like in a firm like Apple, they do work with health professionals. So how, how is the accuracy of those devices relative to some of these other home care, the traditional cuff method? Yeah, they're, they're very spotty. There are scientific articles showing that various brands that claim to measure blood pressure, in fact, are not classified as medical devices, but there's a a category called recreational devices, and they don't have to pass the rigorous standard from the FDA. So that it's just a question of, you know, blood pressure is the most important vital sign. It determines basically how long you're going to live, how well you're going to live. You know, your, your respiratory rate, your heart rate at the time, you know, not particularly important. So I, I would not take shortcuts this day and age until there's been a great deal more development and, and in particular regulation of the devices so that for some reason, recreational devices are allowed to use the words blood pressure when in fact, there's no proof that they're measuring blood pressure itself accurately. Well, Dr. Alpert, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. I I would look forward to that. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. 
have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. Well, tomorrow is the American Thanksgiving holiday. We won't have a show, but we'll be back again on a Friday with a rerun of our previous top show. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. Don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.